Have you ever found an old photo of an ancestor and thought, wow, I bet he served in the Civil War? Well, maybe, maybe not. Here's how you can find out more about that possible Civil War ancestor. Hi, I'm Amy Johnson Crow, here to give you tips, tricks, and encouragement to help you find your family history. And right now, we're talking about Civil War ancestors, specifically the American Civil War. Approximately 3 million men served in the Civil War. And while that's a lot of people, it also means that not everyone served. So before you start digging into military records, you really need to look for clues as to whether or not your ancestor even served. So how do you figure that out? Well, first, start with when your ancestor was born. Most men who served in the Civil War were born between 1820 and 1845. Now that's just an average and there are some exceptions. I'm looking at you, Johnny Clem, little drummer boy of Chickamauga who was born in 1851, throwing off the averages like that. But by and large, those dates, 1820 to 1845, are really the dates that you wanna keep in mind for when those Civil War ancestors were born. So if his age is right, start looking at home, literally. Look for things like old photos. Do you have any photos of him in uniform? Do you have any old letters or diaries or journals? Do you have any sort of memorabilia from things like regimental reunions? And of course, bring in the rest of the family in on this treasure hunt. Do they have any photos or letters or journals or anything like that? You never know which branch of the family is going to wind up with these things. So make sure that you're asking your cousins, your aunts and uncles, ask everybody in the family what they might have. So what do you do if your family is like mine and you don't have a lot of old family photos or letters or journals? Well, now is when you need to start doing a little bit of research. Look for his obituary. It might mention Civil War service or it might mention a fraternal organization like the GAR, the Grand Army of the Republic, which was the largest organization of honorably discharged Union veterans. And it's not unusual for a veteran to mention his affiliation with one of these military fraternal organizations. So look for those clues. Also, take a look at his tombstone. Now, if you can't go visit it in person, Try looking it up on a site like Find a Grave or Billion Graves. You really want to see the tombstone. You want to see at least a picture of it because you're going to be looking for things like symbols that indicate military service. And if you're really lucky, it might actually spell out what his military service was. If he died after 1910, look for him in the 1910 federal census. Now, this is a record you might have already looked at, but did you look all the way over in the right-hand column, all the way over in column 30, where it asks about Civil War service? Look for the initials UA or UN, that's Union Army or Union Navy, or the initials CA or CN for Confederate Army or Confederate Navy. Again, that's all the way over in column 30. Okay, you have some clues that he served? Great! Now is where the fun really begins, because now you have to take that step to find what regiment he served in, or if he was in the Navy, what ship he served on or what vessel he served on. Well, why do you need to do that? Why do you need to find the regiment? Because most Civil War records are either arranged by regiment or they use that regiment or vessel to identify that soldier or sailor, to differentiate him between somebody with the same name. Remember, back in the Civil War, they weren't issuing serial numbers like they do now. So putting that regiment on the record was really a way to tell apart two or more people who had the same name. Remember how I said that about three million men served in the Civil War? Well, 
that means the chances are good that there is more than one person who served who had the same name as your ancestor. Now, one of my Civil War ancestors was Eber or Eber Johnson. And believe it or not, even with that unusual first name, there is more than one who served in the Civil War. So I do need to know his regiment to make sure that I'm looking at the records for the right person. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that regiments, or at least many companies within a regiment, were often formed locally. And we can use that information to our advantage when we're trying to separate different people with the same name. Now, you can often find this information about where a regiment or companies within a regiment were raised by using things like, oh, I don't know, Google. Also look at the websites of those local or those county genealogy societies. They often have this kind of information. Look at old county histories, either in print or a lot of them are online, either at Google Books, DPLA, or even at Family Search. When you have an idea of the units that were raised in an area, it will really help you focus the possibilities for your research. When I'm researching my ancestors in Lawrence County, Ohio, I know what regiments were raised down there. And that really helps me eliminate some people with the same name who were serving in regiments that were formed 250 miles away up in Cleveland. So what records can we look at that might tell us our ancestors' regiment? Well, take a look again at those obituaries and tombstones. It's not unusual for the service to actually be spelled out in those records. If your ancestor served for the Union and he or his widow was alive in 1890, take a look for him or her in something called the Special Schedule of Union Veterans and their widows. And yes, I said 1890. You might be thinking, well, wasn't the 1890 census destroyed? Well, yes, much. In fact, most of the 1890 census was destroyed, but that was the population schedule. What I'm talking about here is a completely different schedule, one that was devoted specifically to Union veterans and their widows. Now, even this special schedule does have some losses. It only exists now for about half of the counties in Kentucky and then alphabetically through the states through Wyoming, plus a handful of pages from other locations. So if your ancestor in 1890 was living in some place like Pennsylvania or New York or Tennessee, hey, you're good to go take a look for that ancestor in this 1890 special schedule. On the other hand, if your ancestor was living in some place like Indiana, Illinois, Iowa, I'm really sorry. The 1890 special schedule of Union Veterans and Widows is available on Ancestry, it's available on Family Search, and really most of the major genealogy websites. Another place to look for your ancestor's regiment is in the Civil War Pension Index. Now, this is going to be a resource specifically for Union veterans. The U.S. Pension Bureau actually maintained two different indices for Civil War pension applications. One was arranged alphabetically, and these are the images that are available on Ancestry. It usually includes the name of the veteran's widow, if he had one. Now, the other kind of index was the organizational index, which is arranged by regiment. This index is searchable for free on Family Search, and it links to the images on Fold 3. Now, what's cool about the organizational index is that not only does it give that same basic information, these cards often include the veteran's date of death and place of death. So when you use these two pension index cards together, both the alphabetical index that's available on Ancestry, along with this organizational index, you can usually pull out enough information to really narrow down the possibilities of who is and isn't the ancestor that you're looking for. Well, that's all well and good for Union veterans. What about Confederate veterans? Well, the same thing applies. You still want to look for his obituary. You still want to look for his tombstone. 
and pull out that same information. Now, you're not going to find him in those alphabetical pension indexes or the regimental index that I talked about a moment ago, because those are federal pensions. Confederate veterans weren't eligible for those. But Confederate veterans could apply in certain circumstances for a Confederate pension. Confederate pensions were actually awarded by the individual former Confederate states, along with the states of Kentucky, Missouri, and Oklahoma. Now, what's great for us as researchers is that many of these are actually digitized and available for free over on FamilySearch. Now, this is just the very tip of the iceberg with researching your Civil War ancestor. There are so many other records that you can explore about his service and give you more information about him. Down in the description, I'll have links to articles that I've written about other types of Civil War records that you'll want to explore. So take a look for those down in the description. The key to successful Civil War research is keeping your ancestor's identity in mind rather than just relying solely on his name. Think about that birth date. Think about where he lived. Think about who he was married to. Think about when he died or even where he was buried. And when you compare those facts about his life, those other facets of his identity, when you compare those to what you're seeing on these records, then you can start to arrive at certainty as to whether this record pertains to your ancestor or someone else who just happens to have the same name. Want more help with your family history? Check out these other videos that I have on screen. Happy researching!